Join us today as we experience the world's youngest geothermal system and where once laid the eighth wonder of the world. Welcome to Waimangu Volcanic Valley. We are growing up without borders, a family of five traveling to every country in the world. It all began with a five week trip to Europe back in 2013, which then led to us traveling to now six continents in 98 countries. We've been blessed to spend many months here in New Zealand and explored everything from the very top to the very bottom. Are you ready to join the journey? Let's go. So we did a really nice drive from Okeri Falls through Rotorua and then all the way down to this place here called Waimangu Volcanic Valley. This is it, Waimangu Volcanic Valley. They do all these cool tours. Yes. And it's the youngest geothermal area. So the cool. youngest, which means what? Can it start? erupting right before our eyes maybe maybe hopefully not <laughs> look at it looks like jurassic park with all the trees yeah. pretty cool eh? there's different packages as you can see you've got a full experience which is the valley entry and the boat cruise 85 dollars for adults uh, there's a family pass for 206 and then they have different things if you want to do just the boat or just the tour so they have a whole cafe in here with some yummy treats Funny Always that, good. Like, as if you're at home. It's pasta, there's rice, there's flour, there's sugar. Yeah, they have everything. <laughs> and a nice cafe and a nice little store. We started the day in the shop where David Blackmore showed us a really great overview of the whole volcanic valley. He explained to us that the violent eruption of Mount Tarawera came all the way down 17 kilometers right to where we were standing. Then he explained to us and showed us images of the white and the pink terraces, which is one of the eighth wonders of the world. And they would stay in an accommodation house, basically where we're standing now, mm -hmm. um, the balcony. So early tourists used to come here, if you can imagine, just to see this geyser erupt. And it still and was the largest in the world, higher than the Empire State Building, 400 meters high and people would come dressed as this to come and experience it all the way, let's say from Europe by boat. Years after the eruption, that's it today. Same spot basically looking down. So here's something really interesting. What we're looking at in this valley, this is what it looked like after the eruption. So it was completely desolate. And after about 30 days, the first little fern popped up and then of course the birds started coming and like seeding it and just expanded and now it is one of the most uh, indigenous trees and, and plant life that you're going to see here just like it used to be here in New Zealand. This building here was the accommodations that people would come and stay at in 1903 and it basically burnt down because of the eruption here of what is called the frying pan flat. So the geyser came up, it erupted and it was enough uh, to basically it down. So since New Zealand's really good at naming things, for example the North and the South Island, they call this the Southern Crater because it's the most southern crater from the volcano. So creative, right? <laughs> so this fuchsia tree it would be a shrub size, so quite small, but because of the volcanic soil that was deposited there, you get these trees that grow enormously big that normally wouldn't be so big and you also have for example their native bird which doesn't have you know the ability to fly and is small so it's really in a sense very jurassic the way the the way the plants grow and the way the the things are it just is just very unique to new zealand of course not just the soil but the climate the uh, amounts of rain they get and everything has to do with it but normally that tree would only be the size of a little bush 
so here's the map of the whole area. So this is the visitor center where we started. This is the southern crater, which you just saw. And then you follow this trail. This is the frying pan. And continue on until you get to over here, I think. Or here, and then you take a bus to get to the boat. Yeah. And then you take a boat tour. And then this is going to be Lake Rotomahana. Oh, cool. You've got the old and you've got the new. That's amazing. So today and yesterday is nice and easy to access. So we just saw Frying Pan Lake and basically back then when the tourists used to come it was just some platform you can walk on it and underneath your feet you would hear it sizzles so that's why it's called Frying Pan but then basically it kind of like water came up in it and it made a lake. I thought it was going to be small like maybe a third like one third of the size look at how big it is. It's humongous. Huge. Yeah. I think this is the largest one in the world. Hey, Julia. Yeah, it's the largest, largest one. one I think I've seen. It's really nice and warm, but you cannot swim in it, of course, because if you swam in it, well, it's there's a sit in it, so. Wow. Yeah, you can see it down below. This is crazy because this is the largest hot spring in the world. Like, and you definitely do not want to swim in here because there's acid and it's really hot. What do they call them? Stromalactites? What? So oh, where were they called? It's hard to remember the name. Stromalactites? They're in the lake down there. And they're like almost, they look like kind of like a branch and they keep growing out and they give lots of oxygen. And they're a billion years old. Oh, yeah. That's the Cathedral Rocks. That's the thing that blew up in 1917. This right here? Yeah, and that's what chucked um, that material up to the accommodation house. Oh, and you can see wow. Kind of on that ridge line, a little white marker point is where we started our walk today. Okay. Like, look at them. running towards the guys. They're going to see it. They're going to see it, <laughs> and we think they're carrying photographic equipment. Oh, the, so these were the chips brownie and you know. They were the journalists of their time yeah. going to get these or, crazy or the, shots. Um, or the Instagram influencers. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> before you learn you to you lunatics were on their Instagram. <laughs> these so you can imagine the tall the world's biggest geyser was right here. Like it went all the way up there. And it was going off for about four years and it was like four hundred and fifty meters tall. Crazy. Yeah. We think they were brought forward up to this valley and we think they then started growing again that's incredible to think of good morning it's incredible to think of seeds trapped Look by that. something kind of historically and then when they get to the surface again up they come yeah, yeah. so i'm always really at pains to point what out is the name of it silotum nudum it hasn't really been given an, a, a nice um, easy name has it survived kind of adapts and it adapts because of the uv light from the sun and it turns that orange and color so you'll often see in um, geological settings like this the green and the orange colors together that's because the algae is adapted beautiful it's lovely yeah. yeah so this here is called natuya otapapa which is the hot springs of mother earth How does it feel, girls? It's really nice and warm. Does it? Ah, warm. Oh, yeah. yeah, nice. Think of that texture, the texture of an, a soapy elephant's trunk. I reckon I've, that is as close, I reckon, as you get to doing it. So touch that and tell me if it feels. Does it feel like an elephant? Does it feel like an elephant's trunk? It's got yes. a slightly strange thing to it, eh? Sort of firm, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of firm, but there's a soft outer layer to it, right? Yeah. It's oh, quite it feels a weird, so nice. It's quite a weird sensation. Wow. So 
after you're done walking through the volcanic valley, you board a bus which takes you all the way down to Lake Rotomahana. And this we actually did a different day to get blue, beautiful skies. Once you arrive at the lake, you board the boat called Ariki Mohana and you go over the final resting place of the pink and the white terraces. Got the best seats in the house outside. Explorer making its way from Frying Pan Lake. This was not an island. In fact, it was just a hill. There was no water surrounding it. The lake itself has roughly increased to 20 times its original size. That was pretty cool. Oh, those are the white and pink terraces. One of those ones. So we're not sure how geysers work, but he does say it goes off on a regular. So if you know, please comment below. Do they go off on a certain time and a certain day? I heard that people put, you can put soap in it, right? To make it erupt. So certain ones that you can see erupting at certain times is for that reason. But this one's purely in the nature. There's absolutely no one around to make it erupt. So he says it goes off like clockwork. So this would have been also where the different terraces were, the pink ones. Wow, this is cool, but this is like the ape wonder of the natural world. Natural wonder of the world. I'm just looking in the ground and seeing what that hell is. But yeah, it would have been here. Wow. Here? Sure. Yeah, it yeah, would have been here. All here. But now it's covered with ash and mud. And the volcano, yeah, kind of destroyed it. Oh, it's going off. Woohoo, it's doing it. Look at that. Well, oh, that's pretty cool, guys. Imagine you're just walking along here in Rotorua and then boom, a geyser goes off in front of you like that. Like crazy stuff. What do you think, Chloe? What do you think, Ashley? Do you think your mom's embarrassing? Yeah. I'm the geyser princess. What in the world? The one that goes, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it likes that. It went away. <laughs> My singing made it stop. Dime, cuántas veces me volviste demente. Ahora sin que estoy tan solo no es fácil. Te quiero, baby, hasta que nazca el sol. Hasta que nazca el sol. Dime. This is really cool. So you can see the the deep geothermal basically flow coming up through the rocks, and then there you've got the inferno crater lake the frying pan lake so it's all like bubbling up as you see here Thanks to Waimangu Volcanic Valley for welcoming us and taking us on this beautiful tour. 